right, ladies and gentlemen, this is Blake Morrow. You are listening to the Morning Edge webinar. I want to welcome you all back. As you can see, the dollar Canadian is hitting new highs on the day. Uh, let's go ahead and um, grab a bias chart. Let's get started here. <laughs> Excuse me. And we're going to start off with a little bit longer term charts today. So uh, let's go over to the euro. And here's the weekly chart. Okay. So you know, in the grand scheme of things, um, if you look at the euro dollar, the, the you know it's a thousand pip rally, but off the lows. But really, I mean, I don't think the overall trend has really been really changed here. Okay, we uh, have stalled in between, um, you know key 618786 fib levels down here on the weekly charts um, we're rallying back you know closing in on our previous supports um, which you know you have to imagine this is going to be if we ever get up towards 116 here there will be some major resistance coming into play so I mean if you think about you know longer term here and you go well you know, I'm I'm looking at shorting around 114, uh, you know, 114, 115. You have to also imagine that previous support from way back in 2005 is right over here. And now that is the same um, that you would notice with the dollar index if we get down to 9250. That's why I'm, you know, I'm I'm hoping we get um, we're gonna get to the 9250 with the dollar index, I just don't know if we're going to actually get there because I know everybody, myself included, is trying to sell as we get there, just like the euro dollar. Everybody's trying to get short the euro dollar as we approach 116. Well, you know, that that starts to, you know, make me believe that we're probably, probably not going to get up to 116, you know, and, and I'm starting to think that maybe even a move up towards, um, um, you know, up, up towards this, uh, this, uh, 115 and a quarter is going to be, you know, maybe it, but we'll find out, like we'll find out soon enough. I think, you know, and as we looked at the daily chart a little bit earlier, you know, we, uh, we're approaching or did hit on Friday, that previous support from back here at 114.60, we hit 114.66 on Friday and we tagged it. That's that red, red line right there. Okay. This downtrend line. It does come into play. I don't know if it comes into play right where we're at, maybe a little bit higher, a little bit lower, but we're basically, you know, there or close to it. That's why if we get one brief new high, uh, I wouldn't mind selling it. You know, if we could do this in the euro dollar, we can do one more, and then I want to short the euro if we can get it. Um, you know, might not be able to get that. You know, I'm assuming relative strength is going to continue to diverge here. So, if we get one push up, that I'll, you know, I'll uh, I'll consider that being extremely lucky. As you guys know, the Greek gods would be singing. Oh, Euro got to 114.80. It's time to short. You know, if if we get up there, that's why I'm going to look at it. But again. We break through this 113.30, and uh, then we're just going to have to chase it lower. That's the way I'm looking at it. You know, I'm going to have to chase it lower and put my stops above this high. So, a couple of you might might say, well, Blake, why don't we just start shorting it here? You could. I wouldn't get aggressive. If you want to short the euro dollar now, you just have to keep in mind that you want to add it add to it as we get to 114.80, 115, or you don't want to add until we get below 113.30. I have considered doing that. I haven't done it. I have considered it. Okay. All right. So anyway, support 113.30, right? Whatever this low is, 27, 113 and a quarter. Let's just do that. 113. 113.25. That's important support. Resistance. Well, you know, is 114.80 the number? 
I don't know, what's 127% extension of this move? One fourteen fifty seven, which we already hit. See that might that that might be the problem is we might have already done it. See how we might have already did it on Friday. And that takes us all the one hundred sixty one percent extension takes us all the way to one fifteen fifty. Hold on a second. Yeah. See, so yeah, at one fourteen sixty is the hundred and twenty seven percent extension. We're bullish for now. Like I said, for now. All right, let's go over to the let's go over to the pound. Let's take a look a uh, longer term view of the cable. Here's a weekly chart on the on the pound. Now, as you guys know, 50% retracement, previous support, that all comes in at 115 or 158.60, right? The low here, 158.73. We hit a high last week, 158.15. A um, lot of people trying to lay into this thing as we, uh, as we, as we, you know, march up to those highs. All right. Now we had an ascending wedge. We already broke. Uh, today we're a little bit lower, but not much. But we're already coming out of that ascending wedge. So, previous support, previous support. Uh, it's a tougher call here. Oh, you know what? Hold on one second. Okay. Um, I was trying to. I was trying to. Uh, you know, people were looking at this as a cup and handle formation. I, I just. I still don't. I'm. I'm not in a hundred percent agreement of this. You know, th this jagged bottom here. It, it just. Uh, cup and handle patterns are usually formed from uh, a rounded bottom, but you know, rounded bottom is trade, traded a couple of times because you trade it as a rounded bottom once it starts to accelerate, and then um, then the cup and handle. Okay, uh, but anyway, let me try something else. See, there's your 161% extension. Just overshot it slightly, right into a bunch of selling. Um, yeah, so. That double top, see, I'm assuming this is the neckline, but that's tough to say. It's really tough to say. First of all, the really key resistance, I believe, is above 158, so 158.10. But we're at 156.80 right now. I don't think we're going we're gonna to see those levels today, even if the euro stages a rally. So we'll be lucky if we can get back to here which will be previous support, current resistance, and that comes in at 157.40, okay? Like I said, I think we'll be lucky if we get back there. One, 
5740. Now we are still bullish, but you know we're at risk. We're at risk also with the euro dollar too. You know, if the euro dollar slips below that one uh, one thirteen thirty, we're at risk of turning these you know uptrends back into neutral. Okay. Um, Yeah, that's that's key resistance for today. So low to high, twenty four percent retracement. That is supporting right now. Thirty eight percent retracement will be right here, which comes in at one fifty six thirty five. Let me get rid of this to avoid confusion. We have these spike lows right over here, so that's really our support. One fifty six thirty five. All right, let's go over the Swissy. Here's the Swissy. And uh, so the Swissy, we created a double bottom here. Now, what we are actually in is in a wedge. Um, so let's delete that for a moment. Here's our weekly chart. Now, we couldn't measure, and everybody should know this, but we can't measure from down here because everybody has different lows here. I don't, we can't measure from there. So we have to measure from where we all have the same, you know, level uh, measurement to, which is actually right here, okay? We can't measure that low because everybody has different numbers, but this, this low, we'll all have the same number should anyway that comes in 85 15 618 held boom boom twice okay now you can see this let me get rid of this yellow line for now we don't need this okay we're in a descending wedge that means our breakout point is up and coming here at um really it's 92.50. So we got to watch at 92.50 because if 92.50 breaks, it'll be at the same time when this 113 and a quarter breaks. 92.50, and that will turn you know our our charts that have been you know um, bullish in the euro is going to turn us back into a range environment. Uh, we're already in a range in the dollar Swiss, but that's going to allow for some squeezing here if we break this uh, this resistance right through here. Okay, support. I mean, support comes down here at ninety eighty. I just don't want to write that number down today. We're a little too far from it. So support right now. Look, we gap down. We rallied. Filled the gap. By the way, the Swiss uh, retail sales numbers came in really poor last night. Retail sales out of Swiss Switzerland came in at negative two point eight percent versus negative two percent expected. Um, in case you missed it, ninety one ten support here, interim. Okay. Uh, let's take a look at the yen. I don't really need to go on the long term of yen. I mean, I can. We might as well. I mean, this is what the yen looks like right now. And by the way, uh, 
if you're if you're wondering, oh, is that a flag pattern? This flag pattern, the flag has surpassed more than half of its pole, the flag itself, so it's not a flag pattern anymore, or a pennant, or anything like that. It is a nasty consolidation that we've been doing for the last, you know, six months. There's absolutely nothing going on at the moment. Somebody wake me up when we get out of this 119 to 120 30 range. Okay. There's your range. All right, let's go over the Canadian. So the Canadian, uh, most of you already know this, 38% retracement, range bottom, okay. Uh, we hit it last week, we bounced. We're just, all we're doing is we're probing the, the we are probing the lower end of the range. Now we're bouncing through because we, you know, we had a, nice descending trend line that we're breaking above. The level that we were looking at last week, oops, I don't know what that is. The level we were looking at last week is right here is the 618. So we're there, 120.65, that's resistance today. If we can break above that, 120.65, the next resistance is at 121.10. We're in a range. Support. Let's go over to the hourly really quick. So supports right here at 119.90. Okay. Uh, let's take a look at the Kiwi. So, you know, as I uh, as I mentioned with the Kiwi, and I'm I'm going to say this again. Here, let's let's do it like this. Where did all my circles go? I had a bunch of circles. Oh, there they all are. Boom, 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 boom. Okay, so let's delete this really quick. Let me uh, show you what I mean when I say that the we've had this really, really nice rally in the euro dollar. Let's... Okay. Um, Look at it like this. Okay. You can see this divergence that really um, took place right around here. Okay. See how the euro went that way? See how the, the kiwi went this way? So what happens if the euro decides it wants to do this? It wants to go down. What do you think happens here? We should break lower. We should break lower towards 72 cents, maybe even lower than that. Okay. So uh, the euro dollar kept grinding higher as the kiwi started to diverge, which suggests to me that if the euro comes down, the kiwi is going to come down probably pretty aggressively. Okay. Right now we're poised on some pretty key support. What support is that? What's the 618? It's right here. Okay, it's at 74, 74, um, basically 74 cents. That's holding us up. It's still holding us up. Head and shoulder pattern is complete, basically. So let's just delete that just to avoid confusion. 
we have a 618 and if we could break below 74 cents today 7405 it's going to open up some downside so wait next support will be 7360 and you can see a spike low right through here so point seven three sixty point seven four oh five resistance I mean it will be right to the fill fill the gap because see the support right through here see where the bar where we ended that comes up at seventy four seventy that's resistance today Okay, guys, I need to go blow my nose. Um, yeah, just, I was, I was actually, uh, unfortunately, when I, like last week, I just didn't get a whole lot of sleep. So I fell a little under the weather this weekend, but my wife did too. Um, so unfortunately, I got to go blow my nose. I'll be back in a few moments. When we come back, we'll finish up the Aussie, the dollar index, and uh, we'll take a look at some of the other Nordic currencies to be right back. All right, traders, this is Blake Morrow. You are listening to the Morning Edge webinar. I'm going to welcome you all back. So we've got the Aussie and the dollar index to finish up with. So let's go ahead and do that. So um, let's see. We're going to start with the longer term view of the Aussie dollar. Um, so here's the Aussie. Uh, you know, last week, we tried to push out of this um, this um, uh, uh, me megaphone pattern. Okay, you can see it's highlighted in yellow. Uh, we briefly uh, moved outside the megaphone pattern, but you know, all in all, guys, the the the, the Aussie dollar is really maintaining near its lows. I mean, if you think about the dramatic drop that we've had in the Aussie dollar, I, I mean, I'm just not, I'm not convinced that, um, that a bottom's in. And, and, you know, and I'm not short the Aussie dollar. I'm actually long the Aussie New Zealand at the moment. So, um, you know, I would benefit if the Aussie has actually bottomed. I'm just not really convinced that the Aussie dollar has bottomed. Right, and matter of fact, I'm a little concerned that the Aussie dollar may start resuming its downtrend if we take out some of the support that we're, that's coming up. Um, anyway, as you can see, this last move, okay, the last move lower, we hit the 786 retracement and rejected from there. So last week, that move up to the 8160. It surpassed the 786 just slightly, but relative strength was also diverging at the time. You can see how we hit new highs, relative strength diverged, and now we've broken down. Now, the, 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 the scary thing is, is if you take a look at like, here's RSI here, we're really coming on to support. Also, so is trend line support coming into play. So if trend line support gives, that relative strength is going to give, and uh, then we're going to have a little bit of a problem. So let's take this trend line you can see here, put it in like that, and that should be pretty critical support. There's the low, high, 618 comes in at uh, 79. 75 basically trend line support is going to come in right around the same same levels uh, matter of fact I, I think what we should do is we should actually take this right through here I'm gonna get rid of this one okay that's gonna be really critical support for bulls spike low Gap down, spike low, spike high. Okay. 
that all comes in around 79, let's just call it 79.50, really key support. For the Aussie. Resistance? right through here. Support, 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 spike high resistance, spike high resistance. That's all at 80, 60. If we break through that 79.50, we're gonna put, um, we're gonna put the downside back in play. It'll still be a range environment. I'm just saying it's going to put, you know, the downside in play here. Okay. Let's take a look at the dollar index. There's the dollar index. And the dollar index, pretty, um, I mean, it's pretty clear right now uh, as far as I'm concerned. It, it, it Pretty clear as far as support goes, which is right through here. Here, let's get rid of this. Okay. Um, if you go back to the daily chart, you can see that low from back in February, the low back in February, okay, basically holding it. So it, that comes in right now at 93, what's the low here? 317, what's the low here? 9313. So basically 9315 is support. And um, resistance. And this comes in for the apex. Is going to be previous support, previous support, all that support. Okay. That comes in at 94 basically 94 and a quarter. Okay, and I still think we're in a range here in the dollar index. Now, oops, I still think we're in a, we're in a range, even if we come out of the descending wedge, I still think we're gonna be in a range. But remember, that's descending wedge um, resistance right now. And so I'll, I'm going to actually put a uh, asterisk next to 94 and a quarter because if we break through there, we should accelerate that dollar strength should come through pretty good, actually. All right. All right. Let's take a look and see if there's anything else out there. Um, here's the peso. Peso has been under pressure, actually. The, the, the peso has been a little weaker than I thought it would be. Um, it's like I, I, I feel like it's playing a little bit of catch up right now. But overall, you have to admit, the, the, the U.S. dollar Mexican peso, it has not pulled back much. It really hasn't. Um, with the big rally on the euro dollar off the lows, and then the... the uh, the peso is barely pulled back here. So here's your four hour chart. We broke through the 618. 786 comes in around 1490. That's probably going to be pretty decent support on the way, um, on the way back down. It's also trend line support. right through here. So if we get, for those of you that can trade the peso, like for that 1490 area, that's gonna be some good support to play off of, in my opinion. Resistance, it's gonna be through here. You, you can see actually it's um, pretty key. 1510. So let's go over to the US dollar Mexican peso. 
support 1490, just 1491, and resistance 1510. We're in a range. I want to make sure that's 1510. Yeah. Spike low there. Yeah, 1510. Okay. All right, let's take a look at the Norwegian Krona, see if there's anything here. Spike low is 127% extension. Let me see if there's any uh, basically holding a 618. Yeah, I don't, nothing looks too exciting here with the uh, US dollar Norwegian Krona. I mean, we'd have to make it above here to, to turn bullish. Comes in at 740. But let's take a look at the Swedish Krona. Hundred and sixty one percent extension. That has been holding us. So if the last move with the hundred and sixty one percent extension, that's actually held us quite quite well. Uh but we haven't gotten much lift off of there either. So I guess we'd have to see some uh, some downside in 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 the euro dollar to really pick up the U.S. dollar Swedish krona. But remember, we in the Swedish krona we're actually still below this daily this broken daily trend line. It's going to stay heavy until we get back above there. Um, so nothing too exciting. Um, so I'm going to let you guys uh, write or uh, take a picture of the bias chart. So there it is. And let me see if I can take some questions really quick. Okay. Going back a little bit.